Hey guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video here. Today we're going to be talking about suspension basics. We're going to dive into five key areas. Those being camber, caster, toe, as well as the shock oil that's used in our suspension and the spring rates. We're going to start off by using these two vehicles as a prop for the video. Now this here on your left is going to be a 1.8 scale on-road vehicle, travels only in a straight line for top end speed. This here on your right is going to be a 1.8 scale buggy that travels over a little bit more rough terrain at high speeds. That's important because we're going to cover some of the key areas that allow these vehicles to do best what they do. Okay, let's start off by talking about camber. Now when we're referring to camber, we're really referring to the angle at which the tire is on the ground when viewed from the front. Now the angle that the tire is at the ground is going to vary based off of these directions only. It is called negative camber when we have the tire facing in towards each other, or it's called positive camber if we have the tires facing outward. Now, typically in RC and also full size applications, you won't really see positive camber being used. We'll get a little bit more into that very shortly. Uh, typically what you see is negative camber being used. Now the primary reason, if you're gonna take anything away from what we're gonna talk about right here about camber, is the fact that camber is going to help out in the corners. Now in the corners, the vehicle has weight that gets entered into the corner, and as that vehicle's weight shifts towards the outside of the corner, so if the vehicle here is making a, a left-hand turn, all our weight is gonna be pushed towards the right. Now what happens is the suspension ends up squatting on that side, and the tire actually starts to lean over. Now if it starts to lean over, you're gonna get only the outside tire contacting the ground. What you wanna do to combat that is have some negative camber. Tires both face in, the outside tire is going to be the one that kind of of takes all the weight of the vehicle as it goes around the corner and as the suspension goes and twists out of shape this one's going to get even more negative but it doesn't have much contact in terms of the weight that's focused in on it all the weight gets to this outside vehicle tire outside tire so then you have a nice straight tire in that corner now a disadvantage of that is going to be that you do have reduced amounts of traction when you're talking about straight line acceleration as well as braking. So really you want to adjust your negative uh, camber if you have a lot of corners within a closed circuit track or something sort of to the nature of that. This guy here runs uh, for straight line speed only, therefore I have a very neutral, essentially zero degrees camber built in. I don't need anything. When it's at high speed, I want all the tire contacting the surface. I don't care about the traction in corners on this. So this is why it's specifically set up as perfect straight up and down. Now. The only area where you really get into positive camber, it's not recommended for most RC applications, is if you have a radio controlled tractor. That's the only area that I can imagine you needing any sort of positive camber there. It's going to be a little bit more stable for the vehicle. It's also going to be a little easier for the tires to be turned by using the force of our servo. Now because the servos are the ones that control it in a typical tractor, you have to turn the wheel, but since the servo's doing it, we don't even care about that. So there's no real purpose to having a significant amount of positive camber built in. So the typical range is about negative two to about zero degrees. Let's move into our next one, which is going to be talking about the caster. Let's talk about caster by taking a look at our 1.8 scale here. Now the 1.8 scale, you can see where the pivot points are for steering. If I were to steer this, you could see that the steering knuckle here is pivoting based off of the upper pivot point here, as well as the lower pivot point here. Now you'll notice that these pivot points are not vertical to each other. They don't line up vertically. They're actually at an angle and they're actually angled back. This is known as positive caster. Positive caster is very critical when it comes to radio controlled applications as well as full size as well. Now a very easy way to see this visually in uh, what most people would recognize is a bicycle. You can see that the fork of the bicycle has the front tire kind of projected outward uh, outside of that fork. The fork is actually behind the center point of the bicycle wheel. This is also known as positive caster. Now positive caster is important for a couple reasons. The primary reason is it wants to track straight. If you can imagine driving your car and you enter a corner, one of the things that you can do is let go of the wheel. Uh, I don't recommend this, but if you do let go of the wheel, you'll notice that that car is gonna end up coming out relatively straight when you do let go. That's It's gonna wanna straighten those wheels out 
uh, right away because of the positive caster that is built into your vehicle. It has a very good tendency to remain stable at high speed because it always wants to track and find center. Now this is very true the more positive that you get up to a certain point with the caster term. Uh, that's what's going to help in terms of your high speed handling characteristics. Now if you go towards a more negative type caster you don't want to go and exceed that zero degree mark on the front end you don't want to do that but if you go towards a more negative value you're going to end up reducing the amount of load that you have to place on your servo in order to get those wheels turned as you can imagine at high speeds you're going to require quite a bit of force in order to turn direction of those wheels uh, relative to having low speed within that radio controlled application. Most vehicles are set up and in fact I've never changed the amount of caster built into my radio control vehicles. I've always gone with the, uh, the stock setup. Uh, in some vehicles you do have the option to go and adjust this very minorly. However, on these vehicles I do not have any sort of adjustment in order to change the caster on that. Uh, so keep that in mind too, that you aren't always able to adjust this. Now let's talk about tow within the vehicle. Tow in versus tow out. Now we can show that by looking at this vehicle, either viewing from the bottom or from the top. Tow is represented by the angle in which the tire makes as it's either pointed in or out. Tow in would be obviously pointing in towards the uh, front end of the vehicle and tow out would be pointing away from each other at the front end of the vehicle. That can apply to the front wheels as well as the rear wheels. Now for tow, tow in in the front wheels is going to reduce oversteer and it's also going to help enhance the high speed stability. Now when we talk about tow in on the rear wheels, it's going to give you that sort of tight rear end feeling in the vehicle. That's where you want to be on the rear. You want to be somewhere between 0 and 2 degrees tow on the rear end. It's also going to give the ability to enhance uh, the high speed stability as well. Now when we talk about tow out in the rear wheels, you typically do not want to go in, into that zone. It doesn't really give you any sort of added benefit. In fact, it makes things worse from my experience. So I would say the range is 0 degrees to that 2 degrees of tow in. Um, when you're talking about the front wheels, tow out does help understeer. It helps to reduce your understeer and it also helps to free the vehicle up as you enter a corner. That might help you if you prefer that sort of driving style or have a difficult time getting the car to get around the corner. You can try using a tow out in the front end. That will help to your advantage. Now let's talk about the suspension setup in terms of our spring rate as well as our oil that we're using. Now both of these go hand in hand. So if we're talking about a stiffer spring rate, we're gonna be talking about thicker oil. And same with a lighter spring is gonna require lighter oil. Now the reason why you want those to go hand in hand, you can imagine if you had a very light spring, it was light enough to support the weight of the vehicle, but your thick oil was much thicker than the spring rate uh, that you're using. So what would happen is you'd be able to compress that spring let's say when you hit a bump that spring ends up compressing but because the oil is so thick when it tries to uncompress and fully extend again that spring is not able to do it quick enough you end up hitting the next bump in the road before that spring is able to push that strut back out and that will hurt and make your performance suffer that's why we want to have them tied in. Uh, it's the same sort of idea if you were to think about the opposite scenario where you have a very heavy spring uh, but your the weight of the oil is going to be relatively light. You'd have a very stiff spring and when you go over a bump that strut it's almost like it's almost going to prevent any sort of dampening from happening. So you get some sort of like that bouncy type feeling. That's why you want to maintain, you know, the same weight relative to the spring rates. You want to keep them in sync. Now there's a few key areas where you want to maintain either a light or a heavy weight oil. Uh, you could see that in these vehicles, I can adjust this. I can push the suspension up pretty, pretty easily. It's not too heavy. Now, when I look at my on-road vehicle, it is extremely tough. It's very difficult to pull that tire up. I have to apply, I'm probably applying a good 10 pounds of pressure um, in order to lift that thing up. 
Uh, it's quite a bit. Uh, that's because this setup does use a very, he very heavy setup. It's not factory stock. It's been adjusted. And I want that because I plan to have this only on the road. I don't want to run over any sort of obstacles or bumps or you know anything in the road. And I want to maintain this ride attitude. I want that very heavy spring rate. I also don't want the vehicle to bottom out. If it were to bottom out, I'll be in trouble. So I'm trying to maintain that very stiff sort of attitude. Uh, as opposed to this vehicle where I want a nice loose sort of feeling within my suspension. As I'm going over a bunch of bumps, it's able to adjust and move out of the way for those bumps. Now the thing is, if you get and hit a big enough bump, it will bottom the vehicle out. It's not that hard to bottom this thing out. It probably takes a good pounder and that's it. And there's no batteries in this vehicle too. So you can see the difference between these setups. If we look at what the heavy or heavier oil or thicker oil does within your setup, that's also heavy oil with the higher spring rate. You're going to have reduced traction on off-road or bumpy sort of surfaces. You're going to have reduced body roll and high speed turns. You're not going to have as much body roll. In this vehicle, I have tons of body roll. In this vehicle, I don't have any body roll when I enter a corner. Not that I need it for this vehicle, but it is good to go without saying. Now, one of the other areas that you're going to benefit from, if you are a basher and you like to take your off-road buggy off uh, big ramps, you're going to want to have a very high spring rate as well as shock oil to absorb those impacts when you hit the ground. It's a very different type of setup. You want to have a nice firm, stiff suspension setup in that case if you're bashing and going off of big jumps. If you want to also look at reducing the odds of the vehicle being able to bottom out, this is another way you can prevent that by going with that heavier weight oil. Now, just the opposite effects is what you'll get with a thinner, lighter shock weight oil. You'll get increased traction on off-road or bumpy sections, which is exactly what this is set up to do, is when I'm going over like a bunch of rocks or a dirt road, this is what this thing can handle really well. And it's really cool to see a slow speed uh, video of the suspension working when you get to zoom in on it. You can see the suspension moving and adjusting itself over top of all those bumps. Uh, I do end up with more body roll in this vehicle too. And as well as when I accelerate very harshly, I can see the rear end squats. So you get all of these sort of effects built into, you know, as a disadvantage to this type of setup. Uh, but that's, that's essentially what you get. It's all a trade-off. You have to balance it by testing, testing, testing. Well, that really covers it for this video. I've gone over the five key areas that I think is important for your basic suspension setup and how you can tune those to get better sort of um, performance with your radio control vehicles. Now, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next one. Thank you for watching.